you are looking at DCIS. Now, this is not breast cancer, but it's being treated with anastrozole or tamoxifen. First of all, can you tell me what is the case for treating DCIS? DCIS like uh, is, um, uh, is, there are cancerous cells, but they haven't actually left the breast yet. They're still so-called in situ cancers. Now, if left untreated, it's very clear that about 30 to 40 percent of them will progress to invasive cancer. And uh, so the option of just doing nothing with DCIS overall is not a good option. There's very good evidence for many studies that the detection and treatment of DCIS actually lowers uh, the rate of invasive cancer in the future and, more, and deaths from breast cancer. And this fits in with other ways of approaching uh, high-risk breast cancer, yeah. preventing it, with these same agents, tamoxifen yeah, well, and estrozole. One of the challenges, of course, is determining which women are going to benefit and which women are at sufficiently low risk that they don't need uh, aggressive therapy. So um, the story is quite a long one. There's the, there are two studies, again, one from ourselves and one from the NSABP, looking at the role of tamoxifen in DCIS. And both of them overall showed about a 30% reduction in recurrences um, with, with tamoxifen. Um, so, so there clearly is a benefit. If you look just at ER positive DCIS, which has not been done so thoroughly in those trials, it's probably a bigger effect. So estrogen receptor positive DCIS, there's probably a, of the order of a 40 to 50% reduction in recurrence with tamoxifen. Right, so what did you do in this study that you're quoting right here in San Antonio? So in this study, we actually evaluated whether or not an aromatase inhibitor, that is anastrozole, would be more effective than tamoxifen in estrogen receptor positive DCIS. This has been seen in invasive cancers. It's very clear that anastrozole is more effective than tamoxifen. And there's indirect evidence in the prevention setting that you prevent more new cancers with an aromatase inhibitor than you do with tamoxifen. So the missing link was what about DCIS, which is early, early cancer or high risk for cancer. And what did you find? And we found in our own study uh, a small benefit for anastrozole over tamoxifen. It was an 11% lower recurrence rate, which was not significant. Now, one of the problems that both of these studies suffered was that when they were designed, recurrence rates were much higher in DCIS than they are now. So they're a little bit underpowered. So when you put our study together with the B35 study, you see a 21% reduction, which is statistically significant. So I think the evidence does support the fact that aromatase inhibitor will prevent more recurrences than tamoxifen. So what should doctors make of this, do you think? Because many of them might have looked for stratifying the patients with DCIS and not treating some of them. Yes. So every aspect of the treatment of DCIS is controversy at the moment now. There are studies saying, do you even need surgery? There's a lot of interest in, in whether or not radiotherapy is over treatment. Undoubtedly, it is for many women. And then this area of hormonal treatment is also controversial. Um, we focused only on estrogen receptor positive DCIS, where the effects, I think, are certain to be bigger. And um, there is clearly a reduction in recurrence, although recurrence rates are sufficiently low, it may not be necessary for all women. What sort of symptoms do you get? The, the symptoms are actually a bit different with the two agents, aren't they? One of the most interesting findings was that, that although there wasn't a big difference in recurrence rates, there were very different side effect profiles. Now, adherence to treatment overall was identical in the two arms. It was 67% at five years. But the actual side effect profiles were very different. So for example, tamoxifen is associated with gynecologic problems, more endometrial cancers, which is a major concern for women that still have a, have a uterus. Um, more thromboembolic events, which are important as well, whereas anastrozole was associated with more musculoskeletal aches and pains and arthralgias and bone loss leading to a higher fracture rate. So these were very balanced overall, but they were very different. So the overall preventive effect, the efficacy of anastrozole seems to be slightly better than tamoxifen, but how should 
doctors view these data and perhaps choose one or other of these agents in prevention of breast cancer after DCIS? Because the results are quite similar, um, doctors, I think, need to individualize the choice for patients. So, for example, if a woman's had a deep vein thrombosis previously, then tamoxifen is typically not a good choice and aromatase inhibitor would be better. If there were problems with musculoskeletal aches and pains or concerns about bone density loss, which can, of course, be ameliorated by using a bisphosphonate as well, but if that's still a concern, then tamoxifen emerges is probably the treatment of choice. So it really does depend on prior history of, of other conditions, and then coupled with the fact that um, you know, once you start one of these drugs, it's not a lifetime commitment. If you're having problems or side effects with one of these drugs, there's now another option. You can try something else. So I think it really just provides another effective option for treating DCIS, which should be in the armamentarium of, of what to offer, particularly for women that have trouble with tamoxifen. What's the take-home message for cancer doctors? Uh, the overall message is that Anastrozole, the aroma inhibitors, are somewhat more effective than tamoxifen in preventing recurrence, but the differences are small, and considerations of side effect profiles emerges probably the most important determinant for which of these drugs to offer.